Hi, I am Dana K. White. I am the author of Decluttering at the Speed of Life, and I am here to answer your decluttering questions and home management questions. So the love of my story is that this stuff is not natural for me. So if it's not natural for you, you're in the right place. I've had to figure out ways to work with how I actually operate, how my brain works, and that's what I share. So, okay, uh, I want to let you know that AskDanaKWhite.com is the place to go to ask questions for future lives. This is especially helpful for those of you who are not watching live, who aren't able to catch these things when they're actually going out there. Uh, that is... Uh, where you can ask questions that I'll answer in future ones, but I'll also take questions in the last half from those of you who are watching live. Okay. I'll make sure y'all can hear me. Okay. Nobody's saying that you can't hear me. So that's good. Uh, all right. Other things too, time sensitive. If you're wondering what to ask for, for yourself for Christmas, get the take your house back course. So the take your house back course is a, a course that I do with Dawn from the minimal mom and Cass from Clutterbug, And we, um, pe we've seen amazing success that people have had from doing this course. So, uh, it's on sale right now. Go to a slob comes clean.com slash take that will tell you everything that you need to know in case you want to grab onto that while it's on sale. I always tell people, grab it when it's on sale. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's get into some of the questions. What I'm going to do is I will read the question as it was actually written and which usually contains more details than you're going to see here. What you're seeing is an abbreviated version of the question because that's all we can fit on this. So here we go. Question. Do you have any advice for breaking through a decluttering plateau? I understand that. I feel like I've gotten really good at identifying and letting go of clutter and have gotten rid of a ton. However, I still feel I'm above my clutter threshold and it seems like I'm out of things I can get rid of and progress has more or less stalled. Thank you, Dana. Your books and videos have been literally life changing for my family. Okay. All right. You already have identified that you're over your clutter threshold. For anybody who's new, your clutter threshold is the amount of stuff that you can easily keep under control. It's unique to you, it's unique to your home. Meaning, how much stuff can you handle? This clutter threshold is the reason that your friend can have the exact same stuff that you have but in her house and it looks amazing and is great and you're like that's the look that i like and then in your house you have that same amount of stuff the exact same things even and it's constantly out of control okay that the difference between those two is the clutter threshold she can handle this amount of stuff you can't handle this amount of stuff so you need to have less for your house to stay under control. So the way that I define clutter is anything that consistently gets out of control in your home. So you're saying that even though you feel like you have gotten rid of all the things that need to be gotten rid of, it's still hard to keep your house under control. This is where we acknowledge if it's consistently getting out of control, I need to have less in that space for me and how I roll and what actually works for me, we acknowledge that this is the end all be all. Like this is the goal. A house is under control is my goal. So even though none of the stuff that's left is obvious that it needs to go, none of the stuff that it's left is going to be easy. I still need to have less. I need to be more ruthless and I need to look at things according to I want a house that I can easily keep under control. Okay. So let's say you're looking at a space and you think I have gotten rid of, well, I'm looking at my kid's closet. I've gotten rid of all the stuff in there that was outgrown. I've gotten rid of all the stuff that we didn't like. I have gotten rid of all of the things that I was saving for the future that I had packed in there and they were making it hard. I've actually gotten rid of all those things. And the only things that are left in this space are the uh, things that actually fit my kid right now. And technically all of it 
does fit within the boundaries of this closet. So that's the container concept, right? Like I have gotten rid of enough that that's all that's in there. And yet I am still finding it difficult to keep it from ending up all over the floor or, you know, my, my kid tries on 16 outfits and those end up all over the floor. And then it's just constantly a disaster, whatever fewer, I need to have fewer things in that space. So it's all right. I'm going to get rid of some more stuff in here. And then we live with it for a little while. It's still consistently out of control. Okay. Then we're going to get rid of some more things. Now to re now remember that the way that you know you're under your clutter threshold is that a five minute pickup gets it back under control on a regular basis. Okay. So on a regular day of doing five minute pickups. So make sure that the five minute pickups are happening because maybe that's what it is. It's like clutter threshold, being under my clutter threshold doesn't mean that things are never out of place. It means that I can handle getting it back under control really easily within five minutes. Okay. So do those five minute pickups. And every time you know, that you realize, okay, five minute pickups are not cutting it. It's been a week of five minute pickups and this space is still, I can't do it. I can't get it back under control in less than five minutes. Well, then we have, we get rid of more and we get rid of more and we get rid of more because that's how we do it. Right. Fine. That's how we find the amount of stuff that, that you can handle. Okay. Uh, here's a question that I get a lot. What if other family members, spouse and young children, have high clutter thresholds? They genuinely don't seem to get stressed while I'm tearing my hair out. Do I ask my husband to honor my clutter threshold or just grit my teeth? All right. The thing that I think is being missed in this question, which is a, it's a common thing, right? Like I made up this term, right? So I get to say what it means, but also I'm going to re-explain what I mean by clutter threshold, which I already talked about in the last question, but let's dig down into this. Your clutter threshold is not a preference. It's not what you can stand. It's not what you like. It is what you can handle. So I think that uh, this is a misunderstanding of clutter thresholds in that my family doesn't seem to care that there's a whole lot of stuff here. I don't like all the stuff that we have. Like I, they don't seem to care about the level being higher and cluttered. I don't want that. Okay. So let's kind of evaluate here. What is it that you can do? So what I would recommend in this situation is to first start out decluttering whatever you can and acknowledge that the clutter threshold is what can we keep under control easily. Use that as an explanation as you are decluttering your own stuff and neutral stuff first, okay? Because what also can, can be happening here is, you know, I know in my own situation, I never was okay with my house being a cluttered mess, but my family had learned to live with the house being a cluttered mess. And as I started working on my house, I was doing it without telling anybody what I was doing. Cause I was, you know, that's just my story from when I first got started, which made me only focus on my own stuff and neutral stuff. And by focusing on my own stuff and neutral stuff, I realized how much of the problem in the house was my stuff and my stuff being out of control and having too much is what had made my family very used to living in a house like that. Right. So I'm not saying it's all on you. I'm not saying it's all, you know, your job to blah, blah, blah. I'm saying the only thing you can actually control is you. And the best way to get your family to even understand the value of decluttering and the value of living in a house that's different than what they're used to living in is for you to go ahead and focus on decluttering your own stuff and neutral stuff first so they can see the impact and the power of having less stuff. And as you're doing that, keep doing those five minute pickups and explain and do that with the family and explain that if five, you know, if, if, 
over time, as we've been decluttering, if, if we consistently cannot get the house back under control in five minutes, it's because we have too much stuff. We have more stuff than we can handle as a family. And so keep those five minute pickups going and continually declutter so that they can start to see, wow, the less stuff we have, the more impact we make in five minutes, that makes it easier. And then it, you know, so, so kind of making sure that you are defining what the clutter threshold really is, is what we can handle, but you even get them into that mindset by making the changes that you're able to make first which is your own stuff and neutral stuff. Okay. The, the number one thing that will defeat you before you even get started when you're trying to change your home is trying to get everybody on board before you even get started. I had to acknowledge that my children, when I first started really trying to declutter in my home, own home, I had to acknowledge that they did not have a frame of reference for what I was trying to achieve. What I was trying to achieve was what they thought we only ever did when grandma was heading over. Like they, they didn't know that I actually wanted us to live with a clean and clutter free house at all times, because that's not what they'd ever experienced. Right. And so, so I had to work on, the um, work on the decluttering of my own stuff. And then as they saw the house change, then they gradually were like, oh, this is what we're going for. Oh, okay. Not like they're going to be like, woohoo, but they definitely won't be like, woohoo, when they're like, what are you talking about, mother? Like, okay. Okay. Um, next. Question again, I read the full question. So what you're seeing is just the abbreviated version. Dana, we bought a home a few months ago and are in the process of practically gutting the house while we are living here. Whew, that is a lot that you're going through. Yes. My kitchen is torn apart. My floors are only half completed. Doors are missing, etc. I have no storage space for items I would not typically struggle with. So now I am struggling with them. No shelves in the linen or cloak closet closets, coat closets, no towel rack in the bathroom, etc. Not to mention sometimes the space I am putting items in is only temporary until its real space is finished. I've struggled with keeping my spaces tidy since I was a child and was finally seeing progress before we moved. Now I am back to being frustrated and overwhelmed with a chaotic space. Any tips on how to manage the chaos in this situation? P.S. You've been a lifesaver for me. Can't thank you enough for all your content. Okay. Yes, I would say in this time period acknowledge i think today's theme is clutter threshold i really do because your clutter threshold is the amount of stuff that you personally can keep under control easily it is influenced by your current life situation okay meaning when life is bananas the less stuff that you have the easier it is to keep it under control in the midst of life being bananas OK, your life is bananas right now. I mean, every single person here who's done any kind of remodeling whatsoever in their home is just their heart is aching for you. Right. Because it is a tough, tough situation. So it's a matter of we are going to function with as little stuff as we possibly can during this time period. So an example. Uh, <clears throat> I did a video that's done real well because that's what happens when you record a video and you haven't washed your hair in three days and your clothes are super wrinkled. Anyway, uh, the layers of a clean house. So it's a video that I put out, I think a week before last. And uh, I briefly mentioned in there how I was at an Airbnb. Okay. And my whole goal while I was there was to use as few dishes as possible. So I had one coffee cup that I was using for my coffee and then I would wash it out and use it for my cereal. And then I would wash it out and use it for um, the soup that I was eating for lunch. And then I would wash it out and I would use, I mean like that was, and, I, and my snack was more cereal because I was like, I only want to use this one cup. That's it. Because as long as I can do that, then I am not going to end up with all these, these things piled up. 
that's not how I normally live. You know, it's not a bad way, but I'm just saying like for that unique situation, I was like, I am not going to spend a bunch of time doing dishes when I am here to get work done on this next project that I'm working on. So that is like a time period. You are in this time period right now where you're like, we are going to only have out one dish per person. And that means that for this time period, everybody's going to wash their own dish, or at the very least, I'm only going to have, you know, five dishes to wash five plates to wash, because that is all we have. And we cannot eat the next meal until we wash the plates that we need for the next meal. And I am going to, you know, have one large skillet and that is all I'm going to cook in. I'm going to cook, you know, that, and then I'm going to have maybe a, a pot for some pasta or something and mashed potatoes or however I want to do it, but that's it. That's it. So like in these moments, you say, I am acknowledging that life is bananas and it's harder. So I need to have less stuff to compensate for everything being bananas. And, you know, you've probably got stuff packed up anyway during this time. So we're going to be like, we're going to, we're not going to have any kind of extra uh, sheets. Everybody has one set of sheets for their bed. And we, and that means that I, during this time, I'm going to pull all the sheets off. I'm going to wash sheets. I'm going to dry them. I'm going to put them right back on the bed before bed that, you know, before bedtime that night. Sometimes situations like this are really great for helping those of us who struggle with clutter. I'm speaking as myself to go, oh, wait, I don't need all the things that I thought I needed. This forced situation into really dialing down on what are the absolute basics that I have to have it can be very helpful. So that's what I would recommend is acknowledge that your clutter threshold is lower because life is bananas. Okay. Um, I need help with modifications for lower back mobility problems. How can you clean when you can hardly walk or carry things, but need to be able to at least do the minimum? Thanks. Um, I think again, that that is the theme. I might just change the title today to all the different ways we can talk about clutter threshold. Uh, I think it's the reality is if this is your reality, then you need to make your home function for your reality, which means less, right? If it's hard to carry things, then let's get rid of anything that isn't essential and really truly has to be carried. Because what happens a lot of time for, for someone who, you know, is for me, when I struggle with clutter, as someone who struggles with clutter, it's like, um, you know, I don't consider all the things I'm going to have to do with these items as I'm bringing them into the house, right? Like I don't consider that they're going to have to be arranged and they're going to have to be moved in order to clean around them and under them and all that. So it's like the less stuff that we have, the less stuff we have. Yeah. The less stuff we have, the easier it is to do all of these things, which is going to, to, you know, to make it easier because if I, you know, kind of like the layers of a clean house video that came out a week and a half ago, whichever that I was talking about, or I hadn't washed my hair in four days. Um, that one is talking about like the cleaning is so much easier when I've already taken care of the daily stuff. So we're going to really minimize the daily stuff as much as we can by not having enough stuff that can get out of control, using as few things as possible so that the daily stuff doesn't need to be or can't get out of control as easily. Right. And decluttering when I'm able or when I have help you know, getting rid of as much stuff as I can so that the cleaning is really, truly just the cleaning. And also I can, you know, on a rough day where you're having, uh, you know, extra pain, I can go a little bit longer without the actual cleaning of the scrubbing because the house is under control because I don't have the layers of the, uh, daily stuff and the clutter. Right. Um, but also to remember anytime that you're decluttering, 
you can do a lot when you use the no mess method and it's not all or nothing it is every little bit that leaves this space is progress there is so much you can do without being mobile like there's so much you can do just in the spot where you are go and watch the one hour better that i did with miss teacher um she had had some major health issue, issues so she was not able to get up and move around so we made tons of progress right where she was not by making piles but by only dealing with the things that were going to go straight into the recycling straight into the trash or straight into the donate box we could do that and just do those things that meant she didn't have to move around and we made huge huge progress okay all right I'm going to take questions from those of you who are watching live. I think I was going to take more questions. I'm going to do more questions from the spreadsheet, but oh well. Okay, here we go. Sounds like, yeah. I, I mean, like, I I know for me, anytime I'm in, I'm in an Airbnb situation or a camping situation, I'm like, oh my word, I can live with a lot less. And also having less is a lot, is real appealing because you realize how much easier it is to, you know, to manage things with that. Um... Thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> I do repeat. I repeat all the time because I'm not going to make up new fancy ways to do things when this is how it actually works. Right. OK. Um, I also sit in one spot and do the five steps in your arm range. If I can't take somewhere, put it in a basket or, but, or skip it. I would say skip it. But yes, absolutely. Whatever works for you. And there's so much you can do staying in one spot. Yes um let's see how to help a 17 year old declutter when she wants to hang on to everything for her one day kids yeah um go through the decluttering process because the thing is when you um especially when you're working with someone else especially if you've had these conversations before and she's like no no no, i want to have this for my one day kids there are things in that space that have accumulated or drifted in that she doesn't want to you know keep for her one day kids it's like the the looking for trash is valuable so it's like print out the five steps go to a slob comes clean.com slash five f-i-v-e print out the five steps and say let's follow this process and you're not going to um you're not going to get into the <coughs> you don't need that you won't need that whatever instead you're just going to say here it is on the the printable that lady i listened to on the internet yeah. Anyway, let's follow the steps and just try it, whatever. So start with the trash. Is there anything in here that's trash? And you're sitting there thinking, there's so much trash. And she goes, oh, no. Oh, maybe this. This is trash. And she throws that away. Right. And, and you say, is there any more trash? According to her, this is all her. No, I don't see any more trash. OK. All right. Let's move to the easy stuff. Just the fact that you said, OK, and you didn't go, are you kidding me? That right there is trash. Because I know how it is to be a mom, right? Like, I know how we are. Um, just the fact that you were like, okay, and move to the next step builds a little bit of trust. And it builds a little bit of, oh, okay. All right. So we go to the easy step. Is there anything in here that has a home somewhere else in the house? But for whatever reason, it's drifted into your room. There are things. There's probably spoons and cups and bowls and stuff like that, right? Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's get that stuff out of here. Every little bit that leaves is identifying what is, is there. Like we're actually seeing what's there. And it's just a little bit less overwhelming every time she comes back to the space. So here we go. All right, is there anything in here that you can get rid of? This lady calls it a dead donation. <laughs> Whatever. But is there anything that you could get rid of? Okay. Just anything that, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Those, those jeans that you hate. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. That right there. Mm, I know he was the worst. And why were we keeping that? <laughs> okay. We're going to get rid of that. Those are dead donations, right? And then you just start going through and you say, okay, all right. So the next step is we're going to ask the uh, decluttering questions that she has. So if you needed this item, where would you look for it first? And maybe we're just dealing here within her space, her room, right? Where would you look for it first? Oh, okay. So you look for it and you take it there now and you acknowledge this, the reality of that space. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you go through the process. And with these things that she's like, well, 
I have to have this for my one day kids. That's not a question that we're asking ourselves in the decluttering process, but we are asking, where would you look for it first? Okay. A box in your, in, on the top of your shelf. I mean, like if she wants to keep things for her future one day kids, y'all, that was me. I totally understand how she feels, but it's this, where would you look for it first? Okay. On the shelf in your closet. Great. Okay. Well, the shelf itself is a limited space. And so then that starts to become the, this is where you would look first for these things that you're saving for your one day kids. Okay. Well, that shelf is full now. Let's, so you want to keep this thing too, but that shelf is full. Okay. Well, what are you willing to get rid of, you know, to make the space for it? Cause you just said you have to have this item. It is going to work more, more better. That's not a thing. It's going to work better than you think it will, but give it a try because remember the beauty of this process is that every answer is yes. You don't have to convince them that it is dumb to keep this item. They say, I, no, no, no. I have to keep my, what were those things called? Manchi cheese. Do you remember those? It was, was that a thing? Was these little, anyway, I loved mine. I'm going to keep my manchi chi, right? And um, I have to keep that for my kids. I mean, it's tempting to be like, <laughs> your kids are not going to want this, but we're just going to say, okay, great. Well, here on the, sh that's where you would look for it. Okay. This is the, where you would look for stuff that your future kids will, you want to give to them. Okay. Well, there is no room for the manchi chi because there are cabbage patch dolls and tickle me Elmo's. And I'm just trying to think of all these things, right? and Barbies and Hot Wheels and all that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. Well, what are you willing to get rid of to make room for the Monty G? Well, nothing. Oh man. You don't have to say, see, there's no, you just go, oh, I don't, that stinks. There's just no space. Okay. Oh, but you really want it? Okay, great. Yeah, absolutely. You can keep it. What, what are you willing to, you know, what can, can leave? Oh, maybe you should only keep four Barbies instead of 47 Barbies for your, you know, daughter, whatever. But it's, it's using that process. It's amazing how well it works. Okay. Yes. Manchi cheese. It's a thing. Weren't they like, they had kind of a plastic face, but then a furry body. Anyway, they were very small and I think they sucked their thumb too. Right. Didn't they? Oh, you've still got yours. <laughs> I think I found mine somewhere. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, yay. I'm so glad you're here now. Uh, senior fixed income, get rid of now, replace later. No dollars for that. I really like your approach. Absolutely. There are videos on that guaranteed off the top of my head. I don't know, but yeah, absolutely. We talk about the value of things. Um, the reality is that if you cannot live easily and functionally in your space, then you are not getting the value of your apartment, your home, whatever, like you're not able to live functionally in that. So I place the value on the space being functional, which often lets me let go of these things that I might or might not need to replace in the future. But yes, I would recommend that you, um, check out at your library decluttering at the speed of life that's my book right there that one okay i would check out decluttering at the speed of life at your local library if they don't have it which most of them do but if they don't have it ask them to order it and usually they'll let you be the first person who gets it when it comes in um but there's physical copies but there's also you know online copies and uh, I mean, not online copies digital you know ebooks and uh audiobooks and if you don't like, if you don't have that set up, the librarians love to help you set up your um, stuff to be able to check out eBooks and stuff. But yeah, that's what I would do to kind of really let yourself grasp this whole process and concept that I think will really help you with, with this right here. Um, I, whoever it was last year, last time, I'm sorry, why can I not remember names, but had said, cause I, I said that somebody had told me, Hey, you need to say every single time. Cause I do say it sometimes just read decluttering at the speed of life. It's going to answer all your questions. And she was like, you were right. It does. And 
And then I said that last time and she was like, Hey, that was me. I said it. <laughs> um, my mother has hoarder like tendencies, depression, and just got diagnosed with Parkinson's, but wants to have a better home. Is the kitchen the best place to start? I get that hundred percent and move on. I am never going to say anything has to be hundred percent before you move on because everything that leaves your house is best. My rule for starting is the visibility rule. Okay. And what I mean by that is I start at the front entrance where people would come into your house because if you start in a visible space, the progress that you make, you're going to be seeing and really experiencing the power of the work that you have done. It's going to increase that decluttering energy where what happens, even sometimes like in the kitchen, if you focus in on, you know, the cabinets or something in the kitchen and really getting the stuff out of there, it can, that, that may not be a visible space. And then the work that you do, you're like, Oh, we've worked all day long. And then you still are embarrassed to open the front door or somebody walks in and you're like, we've been working all day. And they're like, what? I don't see any difference that can be really defeating. So it increases and perpetuates that decluttering energy to work on uh, visible spaces first. Okay. Um, recently I was given a very old and tattered family Bible, which my grandmother had written in the margins. What do I do with it? I really don't want to keep it. Okay. If you already know that you don't want to keep it and you don't have a space, um, I, it's great to donate a Bible. Absolutely. You can donate that. Uh, you might send out a quick text to the family and just say, Hey, is there anybody that wants this? I don't have a place for it. Um, and remember that when you're talking to family and they thought you should want it and you're like, Oh wait, I actually don't blame it on the space always is very helpful. Question about grief, sentimental clutter. What is your approach? I have a room in my basement full of items for my late husband. I'm so sorry for your loss. Okay. The number one thing I would say is to not start with that, start with other things. I just had an email from somebody today that was talking about having watched the videos for one year and then the next year she really implemented it. And then she's really been sustaining the progress for a year. And um, I don't know why I started to say that, but anyway, um, the, the value is in starting in your visible spaces, starting with the non-emotional stuff first. Do not start with the hard stuff. That is the hard stuff. Okay. So really work there. Oh, I know what it was. She was talking about how much easier the hard stuff was when she got to it because of all that she had experienced and learned from doing the easy stuff, from doing the non-emotional stuff. So start, give yourself permission to say, I'm going to worry about the upstairs right now. I'm going to worry about these things that aren't highly emotional and really, really work through the decluttering steps, the five-step decluttering process on those, those things that are not highly volatile, you know, grief wise. And then when you get to that stuff, follow the same process, start with the easy stuff, start with the trash. Is there any trash in here? I'm not going to even worry about anything that needs, you know, I'm not going to worry about anything that is not, um, I'm losing my train of thought. Sorry. Um, I'm not going to worry about anything that is not trash. I'm just going to look for trash. And you start with those super non-emotional things and maybe there's no trash down there, but there is, you know, and you'll be amazed. You just kind of little by little start doing that, but don't start there, start in the other things and build those decluttering muscles that will take you, uh, really far on that. Um, visibility rule is everything. I, I mean, like, everything, but there's no bad place to start, right? Like do whatever you want to do. But as far as like, where do I recommend that you start to naturally build decluttering momentum? It's uh, with the visibility rule. I feel like I might've had that one too. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, Finally got decluttering at the speed of life from Libby. It's been a 28 week wait. My library even got two additional copies. Your book is extremely popular here in the UK. Well, that just made my day. I actually, it's one of the things I do every once in a while. I will go and like just randomly check libraries and see what the weight is on my books because it makes me feel good. 
Anyway, um, love it. Love it. Let's see. Um, oh, love it. You should grab it. <laughs> um, looking for things that have question marks. If you if you've already asked a question, maybe ask it again if I haven't. Um, then it, is this a place I can ask a question about the decluttering coach offering that you have? Sure, absolutely. So those of y'all who don't know, I have decluttering coaches. So if you go to declutteringcoaches.com, that is my website, everyone listed there. And I think we have 40 something coaches all over the US and in several countries around the world. Um, that those are all coaches who are trained in my no mess decluttering process and certified that they have gone through the training. Okay. So uh, that is where you can also go if you're interested in becoming a coach. If you want to learn this process and, you know, have the credentials to be able to say, yeah, I know this process. I can help you through this process. Anyway, so go to declutteringcoaches.com. There's a training course and then there's also certification. Uh, after you've completed the course, if you want to be certified. Okay. Um, you should do it. You should do it. Okay. Um, looking for questions. Sorry. Looking for things with question marks. It helps if you put question marks at the beginning. Um, I also sit in one. Oh, I already did that one, didn't I? Um, I love this. I have one to five minute pickups anytime I have a moment and I do dishes up to five times a day. So maybe five minutes at a time there too. Um, have clutter to move out. But y'all, you're right, Susan, that um, if you will get those maintenance tasks going, even though you feel like, why would I want to maintain anything in this state? Right. Uh, keep going. I mean, like those maintenance tasks are so incredibly powerful. Okay. I love this. Celeste asked for the Take Your House Back course for Christmas two years ago. It is the best gift. Remember again that if you want to grab it, go to aslobchemsclean.com slash take. That is where um, it's on sale right now. So, I mean, it's on sale wherever, but yeah. Okay. Questions. What do I do when all the clutter left is my husband's? Also a strategy strategy for the screws and nuts and bolts he lays all over my counter. Um, yeah, I would give him a container for that. You know, like this, ask him, where would you look first for your screws, nuts and bolts when they're not all over the counter? Because I mean, that's not their real home, right? Um, and then create a container in that space, whether it's an existing container that already exists or whatever. And then that is, you know, the spot and, and, and work together on the five minute pickup. I know, I know that that's an easy thing to say and a di more difficult thing to actually do, but see if you can get on board to do the five minute pickup together. And uh, so that that, you know, moving of the things to the place where you would look for it first, where it actually belongs, becomes a consistent thing so that it's not tons all over the counter, but it's the, you know, the bits and pieces day by day, uh, work on those five minute pickups. But I also, I'm always going to challenge that it's rare that everything left is his, but it could be true. It could be true. Right. So I'm not gonna say it's not, but, um, Keep on working on your stuff and neutral stuff. How do I manage not piling more clutter as I buy more things like holding on to packaging boxes because you might need them? OK, so this is two two questions I'm going to answer. Um, the best way to keep from bring, bringing more clutter into your house is to declutter, meaning the more you declutter, the more you go through the pain of getting rid of something and go through the self-loathing, sorry, but of like, are you kidding me? Why did I ever have this? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, like the, the decluttering process prevents a lot of that, but you still feel it, right? You still feel it. So that will make future items that are just destined to turn into clutter look different to you in the store and keep you from bringing them into the house. Um, but as far as holding on to packaging boxes, because you might need them, 
ask yourself, where would I look first for a packaging box? And then you take it to that spot where you would look first for it. And you see, is there any room here to keep old packaging boxes? And you let that space, not a pile, okay? Because we don't want piles, but like, where would I look first if there's not, if this floor is clear, okay, I would look first for it in this cabinet under this, you know, countertop. Okay, then that is the limit to how many of those you can actually keep. Okay, you let that space decide how many you can keep, which will naturally sort out the boxes that you might actually need in the future and the ones that you're like, oh, wait a minute. When I look at it that way as I can't just keep everything, it has to have a real space and this is the limit of the space. When I look at it that way, I realize, oh, that's not a box I would ever use. I've got six others of those and they're just like it. But so it just using that uh, that process on on everything. Okay. How do we deal with that self-loathing? Are there any good phrases to encourage to keep going instead of giving into that guilt? I am not a phrases. I mean, like, I mean, I'm sure there are phrases, right? You know, like progress and only progress or, you know, organized or people whose houses are always under control. Does, does, uh, what is something I said that somebody was like, oh, that's a great quote. And anyway, um, people whose houses are consistently out of it, under control choose to live with regret instead of with clutter or whatever, you know, like things like that. But as far as the self-loathing, remember that the five-step process does not use any of that. Okay. It doesn't mean we're never going to feel that frustration, but it doesn't use any of it. So you can keep plowing through the process and say, okay, those are not helpful thoughts that are moving me forward. So instead I'm going to say, when I'm like, why do I have this? We don't ask that question. Instead we say, where would I look for it first? And sometimes I ask that about stuff that I'm irritated. I have it. And I'm tempted to spin out on the Oh my word, why do I even have? And I'm like, nope. Where would I look for this first? I wouldn't look for it. Okay, it can go in the donate box. I don't have to worry about why I had it. I don't have to worry about that. It's gone. I had a tool. Where would I look for it first as a way to help me through this and make these decisions that is not based on because the problem is when you're like, you know, do I love it? Will I ever use it? Then I'm bringing in all these things that then help me fixate on the whole, like, oh, why do I, ha you know, why am I this way or whatever? Um, yep. Rachel, it's one of our new coaches. Yay. Um, let's see. How do you teach a four-year-old that new toys are not always necessary? I have tried to state that we don't have space. Container concept has been a struggle for him. Should I declutter without him? Um, you know your kid on the decluttering without him. I know there are people who are adamantly against it because of their own, you know, difficult situations that they live through as children. Um, I personally, my kids were always thrilled when I decluttered without them because they were like, woohoo, we came home and it looks great. Like they were always excited about that. So you kind of have to know your own kid there. I would say go through the decluttering process with him from beginning to end. Okay. Kind of like I talked about with the 17 year old earlier, um, really go through that, you know, okay, let's look for trash and let him be the answerer. Uh, yeah, you said him. I don't know why I was like, wait, is this him or her? Uh, go through that process and let him answer the questions as you go through was as far as the co container concept being a struggle, really, really emphasize and use the one in one out rule. Okay. So how do I teach him that new toys are not always necessary? It's the, if you're going to have a new toy, okay, what are you willing, you know, what do you want to get rid of? So we have room for the new toy that you're buying with your own money or, you know, whatever. Um, what, what are you going to get rid of for this so that we have the space for it? That will help to bring that into focus of the, well, I don't want to get rid of something. Okay. Well then there's no room for a new toy. There just isn't. Let's see. 
Um, I think photo boxes are great. Um, you know, sometimes even just if you want albums, putting them in albums or putting them, you know, anytime you have a photo box, an album, whatever, that is a container. It's a limit. It's a natural limit. And when you have a natural limit, then you put your favorite ones in first, which then naturally sorts out, you know, the ones that are less favorite, you know, anyway, um, which is not really a question you ask. How to live with baby equipment clutter, swing, bouncy chair, etc. When I've been decluttering for so long and was at a sweet spot, we have three boys in school and now a baby at home. Um, this is life, right? Like this is life. And it's wonderful. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And so kind of like we were talking about in the uh, when the question where somebody was saying that they were in the middle of remodeling and it's like, OK, let's let's really minimize the things that we can minimize because this is our reality right now. We are doing remodeling. Let's minimize the things that we can minimize because we have a new baby and the new baby needs certain things. Now, because you've been decluttering, my guess is that maybe what you thought you needed for your first one, you now have the experience, you've got a fourth one and you're like, okay, we don't need all this stuff. So you kind of have identified what things you need, but it can still be hard, right? Like, cause here's equipment that is needed that we don't otherwise need. And maybe you had been able to get rid of some of those things, you know, with the other ones and had enjoyed that having more space, but it's like here, this is our family. Now we have a baby, which means we need to not have, you know, these items for this phase of life. We need to get rid of this category of items, or we need to have a lot less in all the stuff because now we have a baby and that baby deserves space. Um, I'm having another baby in the spring. How can I prep for those postpartum months when I know my clutter threshold will be lower, but it's temporary. I mean, I would just declutter everything that you can, everything that needs to be decluttered anyway. Um, this, the, the idea of something being temporary, I know for me, it's like when it's temporary, it never hurts me to go even more decluttered because it's temporary and life is going to bring more stuff into my life anyway, eventually. Right. You know, so instead of thinking, oh, it, it's going to be, you know, diff it's like, let's go ahead and declutter the dishes as much as I can so that there will be fewer dishes that can possibly get dirty. Um, let's see. Let's see. have a video that's supposed to come out at some point about decluttering. I mean, it was about like getting rid of a lot of stuff in, in Gmail. I know I have a couple of blog posts and the Gmail one is still, I know for sure current, um, on how to delete a bunch of Gmail at one time. So you could Google that with a slob comes clean and you'll be able to find it. I hear from a lot of people who are like, I just follow the same decluttering process. That's the thing. I say the same stuff all the time because I'm like, I'm not going to invent something new when the process works. Right. So when you go into digital stuff saying, OK, I am going to start with the easiest of the easy stuff. I'm just going to get rid of the trash, go through that and then trash, 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 trash. OK, easy. What do I already know needs to be sorted out and put into the right place here? OK, let me go to you know, I mean, obviously the dead donations, I don't know how that would work, but you know, where would I look for this first? Okay. That's the folder. I'm going to put it in over here. So, um, what to do when working on one space and take things to its home. That space also needs to be decluttered. There's no room. I feel like I have to then do that space to make room and nothing gets done. Okay. This is a question I get a lot, right? So what you do in this situation is you remember that I'm working on that initial space. So yes, there is no room for this item here, but my goal is that initial space. So all I'm going to do is remove something from this space that creates the space I need for this item that I say I would look for here first. So this is its home. Okay. So ideally I am going to look for trash, or a dead donation in this space. And you just said this space needs to be done too, right? So that means things are going to need to leave this space. So 
there's got to be a dead donation or trash. So I'm going to take out something that is a lot of times it's packaging, you know, that somehow I had the whole thing in there with the packaging. And then I used all those pencils out of there and the packaging somehow is still here. There's always trash in all these spaces, right? So what in this space is trash or recycling that I can pull out to create the space for this item I would look for first there. Or what in here is a duh, easy donation. I don't even have to think, oh yeah, well that can go. Yeah, I'll get rid of that in order to create space for this item that I would look for first here. And then the reason we ideally want a duh donation or trash is that your donatable donate box and your trash bag and recycling bin are back at the space that you were originally working on. So it takes you back to that space. So we're not gonna stop and now start working on this space, we're just going to remove something and that is moving your whole house forward and it's keeping you back on this original space, okay? Let's see. <clears throat> I have so many books all over my apartment. I pick them up and let them lying around. I wish I did better. Okay, the best thing to do instead of wishing you did better, because I get it, right? Like I'm a person who I'm like, how did I let that happen? That's me, is the five minute pickup. That is the solution. Wishing I was different than I was never actually helped, but doing five minute pickups actually helps. So just doing a five minute pickup every day, almost every day, whenever you think about it, will start to change that significantly. Let's see. Um, yay, audiobook and paper, yep. Yeah. It is in my voice. Yes, I do all my own audiobooks. So oh, that's me. Um, let's see. Oh, yay. Yay, wonderful. I'm assuming you mean as a decluttering coach. That's exciting. I got to meet one of my decluttering coaches in person recently and oh, my word, I was in tears telling, hearing her stories about the people she'd been able to help. I loved it. Uh, most of the coaches also do uh, virtual as well. So if there isn't one in your area, most of them will do virtual sessions as well. So go to declutteringcoaches.com to find you a coach. I'm very proud of them. Let's see. Yep. Take your house back is a great way if you want to self-paced way to work through your home slopcomesclean.com slash take that's how you get the take your house back course um let's see looking for more questions okay i mean i was about to be done anyway i'm like i know there's questions here that i'm not Let's see. Thank you, Jana, for your kind words over the year. I've listened since before the world went very young. The concept of helped me learn things, learn that these things are all skills that can be learned. I'm using them with my adult brother who has developmental disabilities. Thank you so much. He is learning now too. I love it. Yeah, these are skills that can be learned. That's a that's a huge, huge um, realization for you to have that's going to take you really, really far. Okay. What is the high level difference between your books? Okay, so um, I can't really reach them without twisting too much. But so this one right here, How to Manage Your Home Without Losing Your Mind, that's my first book. And it was very important to me that that be the first book. Uh, it is the how to go from, oh my word, why is this so hard? Why does it seem easy from everyone out, for everyone else? And it's so hard for me to, oh, okay, this is what I have to do to keep my, manage my house without losing my mind. That is the one that is for the person who is just completely overwhelmed. Like, why is this so hard? Decluttering at the speed of life is for anybody because it's my decluttering process and it like works in any situation, any home. It has the mindset shifts that you need to make to change how you think about your stuff and your home. And it guides you through the five-step process applied to the different areas of your home. It also has a section at the end, a chapter specifically on grief and clutter. Okay. 
Uh, and then organizing for the rest of us right there is the hardback one. And it is what they call a gift book. And it's basically like the stuff that is like deep in the other books. It's like in tip format, like quick little tip format with pictures and stuff. So um, how to help my parents the most with decluttering. This is a tough one, okay, because there's all kinds of things here, like, do they want your help or not, whatever. Uh, the first thing I would say is that if they are resistant, help them do the things that they do know needs to be done. Help them with their procrastinate clutter. Help them with doing the dishes and putting the dishes away, getting caught up with laundry, all that kind of stuff. I don't know what kind of situation you're here. But if it is they need help with decluttering and they know they need help, I would follow the same process. I would start in the most visible space and go through the five steps that are in Decluttering Speed of Life that you can get at slobcomesclean.com slash five. Like go through those five steps. I always recommend printing out that piece of paper so that it is, this is what she's saying. I'm not the one telling you what to do. This is the actual expert who's written the book and it's worked for, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. One more question. This is it. How to deal with demotivation. I live in a house with two grown adults and I'm trying to focus on myself, but it feels like they keep making messes right where I clean, decluttered and bring in more. It's that's a legitimate challenge that you're you're facing. Um, five minute pickups. I, I know it, it, like really focus in on those daily tasks. And see the power of the daily tasks as opposed to the power of the big cleans. When I was, when my whole house was out of control, I would do a ton of work and then my family would mess it up. And I was so resentful, right? But when I really zeroed in on doing those daily tasks, keeping the dishes done so that there were never that many dishes. And it's not that it's not frustrating when there's more dishes, but when I finally grasp the whole, like if I will do them consistently, it never gets out of control. It never gets as overwhelming as it used to be. Um, five minute pickups will take, okay, I decluttered this space and then now there are things in there and it automatically feels like, oh no, it's back to what it was before, but it's not right. It's not back to what it was before it, a five minute pickup will do that. So if you're able to bring everybody in on the, uh, everybody in on the, like, what am I saying? <laughs> if, if you're able to bring, like, if you live in a situation where you're like, Hey, can we please start doing these five minute pickups? Just five minutes. I really, truly mean five minutes. Yeah, got it. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have time for right now, but this has been fun. Y'all are the greatest. Y'all are the greatest. Okay. I will talk to y'all later. I do want to make sure that I tell you one more time, right? Take your house back is on sale. Slopcomskin.com slash take. That is, uh, you know, a sale that I think it goes through January 10th, but go ahead and grab it now. Make it your Christmas present to yourself or tell the person who needs to get your Christmas present. I went ahead and bought it for myself here. Give me the money and we'll count that as the Christmas present. Right. Okay. I will talk to you later. Bye.